Lucius comes. left okay um so i know i had to rewrite this a lot um because elijah's dad uh pastor he uh i i read it like the day before and he preached it and then pastor scott um preached the other one i was gonna uh i was gonna do and i was like well i wanted to come up with something on my own and i and then i read another one and then god was like scratch that and i was like but why and um and uh, and then he kind of spoke to me, and he was like, "There, me and my friend had been talking about this guy. He, his name is. Pull up my notes. Uh, he is known as the Unkillable Soldier. I don't know if you guys know who that is, but he is. His name is Sir Adrian Cardi, Carton D. Watt. All right. So this man." All right, he he has been I think in seven wars, including World War One and World War Two, and he. Wait a minute, I'm trying to pull up my notes. I promise I'm prepared. Um, but he he has, he's lost an eye. He's um, uh, he he, he has actually lost an ear. He's lost a hand. He actually. What's really funny is because uh, the doctor, the doctor, he had to get some fingers removed, and uh, the doctor refused, and he pulled it off. He just pulled off his fingers, um, and he he's gotten shot in the stomach, the ankle, the hip, uh, the ear. He was he's blind in his left eye because he's gotten shot, and he his leg uh, got blown off too. Um, and the point I want to make is that. Even through all these injuries, he's gotten multiple injuries from all these wars. And his final words were, frankly, I had enjoyed the war. All right, and I kind of wanted to um, focus on his grit. And he was a British soldier, um, he, and he didn't actually die from the war. All right, that's another point I want to uh, make that he, he actually died from, uh, he was 83, believe it or not, or 82. 82, my bad. But he lived that long age, that long age, even though he had all these injuries. And I wanted to make the point that oh, man, there was a saying I was trying to think. If it don't, what doesn't kill you builds you. Yeah, it makes, makes you stronger. You stronger. Yeah. Okay, and I want. I thought about this, and God laid it on my heart to read Job. Um, and I, I've been reading. Uh, I've read Job before, but me reading it over again, I'm like, this is a lot like this man in the grit kind of way. You know, he he pushed through and he was happy to fight. He said, um, I'm going to call him Sir Adrian because I'm not saying Carton D. Ward. But um, Sir Adrian, he, he, um, he said that he frankly enjoyed the war. He, he was happy to fight even after all the wars. Let me tell you something. If I get shot, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be like, hey, hey, I, 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 I'm done. I'm done. But no, he had gotten shot 11 times, and he's, he, he was remained a cripple, and he even fought as a cripple, as, as a general, which I think, I think is insane. But um, I wanted to read in Job 1 through, like pretty much one, chapter 1 through 2, but it says, in the land of Uz lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. So I wanted to focus on a point that this man was completely innocent and that he was, um, that he is completely, um, he, he was a good man. And it later says in the text that um, he, he, was very, he was very blessed by God. It said that he has he has seven he had seven sons three daughters he owned 7000 sheep 3000 camels 500 yoke of oxen 500 donkeys and a large number of servants doesn't he sound very blessed very blessed thousands of sheep and uh 
Job. Uh, he was he was the greatest man among, among all the people of the east. So he he was very respected. He he was very wealthy, and he still loved God. And he's he was. It says he was a very um, he feared God, which a lot of people don't. But that's not our today. But and he said he shunned evil. That means he didn't. Uh, he didn't encourage evil. He didn't let that corrupt him. And it says his sons uh, used to hold feasts in their homes on their birthday, and they would invite th their three sisters to eat and drink with them. When a period of feasting ha uh, feasting had run its course, Joe would make arrangements for them to be purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice and burnt offerings. For each of them, thinking perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. So he he took it upon himself to make sure that his children were right. Even if they had made mistakes, he wasn't like, nah, you're not on your own. He took it upon himself to um to to help them and make sacrifices for them. Um One day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan had also come with them. The Lord said to Satan, ha Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There, there is no one on the earth like him. He is blameless and upright. A man who fears God and shuns evil, does Job fear... For nothing, Satan replied. Have, have you not put a, a hedge around him and his household ev and everything he has? You ha have blessed the work of his hands so that his flock and herds would, are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and surely he will curse, curse your face. And the Lord s said to Satan, Very well. Then everything he has is in your power, but the man himself do not lay a finger on. So he he's telling him that he says that if you don't shelter Job and you don't, um, that he is nothing without these possessions, that he he will curse you if you take away, take away what you've given him. And he's saying that he, he he'll, he'll curse you if you do this. You, you're not able to, uh, he's not that faithful. And I wanted to ask that if, um, if we're, I want to say that we're kind of sheltered, you know, and that we're, um, we're blessed, um, compared to a lot of other people and that we're, we're blessed in the spirit and we're blessed by God. Okay. I'm going to finish. Um, then Satan went, went out from the presence of the Lord. One day when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking at wine at the older brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, "The oxen were plowing, the donk and were plowing, and the donkeys were grazing nearby, and the Sabines at attacked and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who had escaped to tell you." While he was sp still speaking, another messenger came and said. The fire of God fell from the heavens and burned the, up the sheep. And the servants and I are the only, uh, and the servants. And I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he has, while he was still speaking, another messenger came. And the Chal, I'm going to butcher this name. Ch Chaldeans, Chaldeans f formed three raiding parties and swept on your camels and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who's escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, yet another messenger came, and his sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house. And then suddenly a mighty wind struck, the, swept in the house and uh, from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them, and they are dead. I am the only one uh, who has escaped to tell you. At this point, uh, at, at this, Job got up and tore his robe, 
and shaved his head, and he fell on the ground and worshipped and said, Naked am I from your mother, from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. And the Lord gave, uh, the Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. So uh, there's one more verse. Uh, and all this Job did not sin by char charging God with wrongdoing. So this man, completely innocent, God, uh, uh, he instantly knew that God has given him this stuff and God has taken away. He knew at that point that, all right, he knew even before that for him to have this kind of mindset, he knew that none of this stuff was his. It was borrowed from God. And he did not become bitter and he did not let this test... Um, uh, he he did not curse God. He he did not um, become bitter. He did not uh, curse at God. He did not um, uh, he he did not uh, become ang angry in his heart. And he did not, you know, he 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 was still faithful even at this. Everything he has worked like he has worked and God has gave him had been taken away. And I, I know, like, he lost everything within 10 seconds. All this news brought him. His kids died. His thousands of sheep, his thousands of, uh, his hundreds of donkeys and hundreds of sheep had all been taken away. That was his livelihood. That was everything. And it, the rug was completely pulled out from under him. But still, he got up and he worshipped God through all that. And he had that kind of grit to... Uh, to be like, I'm not going to become bitter. I'm not going to uh, curse God. And I think about it, and I'm like, I know I would be bitter. I, um, if we can be honest, like all, most of us here would be bitter, if not all. All of us would be like, what the heck, God? <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm doing your will. I'm, I'm faithful. And God even said that he was the most faithful man on the earth. So... The most faithful had been, um, uh, had been, in what other people's mind, had been cursed by God. And uh, he knows it's a supernatural event because, one, he believes in God. And, two, the fire that he said God struck him down. If he has thousands of sheep, they're not all going to be gathered in one little place. Not gonna ask. No, all of them had been destroyed. Everything he had, he had owned, everything he had cherished, had been destroyed. Okay, I'm going to move on to chapter 2. On another day, the angels came to, uh, to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them and presented himself before him. And the Lord said to Satan, what, Where have you come from? Satan answered to the Lord, From roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord, uh, hold on, sorry, I'm going to pause. So he has been studying Job, you know, he, that, that was, that was him that, that took, that God gave him permission to take everything that Job owned, to test Job. And, uh, because the devil challenged God and God, um, God knew that Job would not falter, and he would not do it. And I wanted to make the point that God won't put you more than you can handle. He he won't put you more. He won't allow things to happen to you that you, he he knows that you can't handle. As long as you pray, and as long as you um, rely on God, and as long as you put your faith through Him, and you rely one hundred percent on God, then you're going to you're going to be able to survive anything that hell throws at you or uh the test god puts you through cuz like the sir adrian he he had survived all these wars and he wasn't a christian but he was never mind um <laughs> So, but he survived all these injuries and through the grit, and then he still enjoyed the war, and he still enjoyed 
um, the battlefield for his country, you know. And through all that, he knew the sacrifices that and the tests that would be uh, thrown at him, then he would fight through it and he wouldn't give up. So, Sir, actually, Sir Adrian, he had been imprisoned twice um, from, he became a soldier, prisoner of war twice. The first time he, he, um, he got captured and he actually escaped. And the second time he um, got captured, he tried to escape and then they drug him back and they beat him and tortured him. And after that, you'd be like, a lot of people, uh, you see a lot of these war stories and a lot of things, they give up. Like after, they, they beat him and they tortured him. And the second time, he tried it a second time and escaped with one eye and getting shot at multiple times. This, this kind of, sorry, I know it's kind of crappy, I'm sorry. But um, th this, this guy, he still had the will to continue, just like Job did, um, just like everything that he knew, everything that he, everything that he knew was pulled out from under him. And Job, later you can see in this text, says, then, then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There, there is no one on the earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and scurns, shuns evil. But shuns, I think that's a typo. And he still man, maintains his integrity. Through you have ins, incited me against, against him to run him without any reason. Skin for si skin, Satan replied. A man will give, give all he has for his own life. But now stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones. And he surely will curse you and uh, curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well then, he is, he is in your hands, but you must spare his life. So Satan went, down, uh, went out from the pre presence of the Lord and afflicted, him, afflicted Joe with pa painful sores. From the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. And then Job took out a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself uh, with it. As he, he sat among the ashes, his wife said to him, Are you still maintaining, maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good, good from God and not trouble? In all of this, Job did not sin in what he said. When Job, uh, yeah, when Job, uh, I'm going to pause right there. Okay, sorry. Um, he was inflicted with painful sores, right? And he was, he had to get a, a piece of broken pottery. That's probably all he could afford because everything he has has diminished. He is, uh, he is, he's going through this tremendous pain, and he is in pain 24-7, and he's being tortured 24-7 by, by this. And he, he has even more discouragement as his wife, the only thing he has, uh, the on, only companion, only person that he has is telling him to curse God and die. She She's lost the will to fight. She's lost the will. And... He is still remaining faithful to God because he has not lost that will. He had not lost his integrity. He has not lost his will to fight. When Job's three friends, Eliphaz, and the Tamanite, Bilidad, the Shunite, and Zophar, the Nanamite, heard about all these troubles that had come upon him, they set out from their homes and met together by agreement to go sympathize with him and comfort him. And when they saw him from a distance, they could hardly recognize him. They had began to weep out loud and tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word 
to him because they saw how great his suffering was. So they see him and they sympathize with him. No doubt um, that he was feeling terrible. He w- went through all this. I'm not going to read the rest of it because I kind of got to wrap it up. I kind of went super long. But um, he, God restored him and God healed him and then God blessed him. And all of this was a test. And all of it was, um, God knew, all, through all of it, God knew that Job would pass. And that Job had the strength and the will to pass um, and to get through that hard time. Um, and he, not once did he lose his will. To he, Not once did he give up. And how easily that we, we give up over something simple, you know? Some, someone says, makes fun of us, someone does this, and, and, or we feel like that God has abandoned us, or God has, um, God has not been there, or other things, that, that one is a lie, and two, that God won't put you more than, more than you can handle. God knows exactly how much you can handle, and how much that how much you're able to fight and how he's not going to overload you. All right. It might feel like it, but, but you, I promise you, you have the strength to overcome it. Just rely on God and, uh, rely on his wisdom and read your guys' Bible. I promise this is, this, this will give you reading this. He, he will speak to you. If you ever feel like that, if you're ever going through um, a trial or, or some kind of um, test, then reading your Bible and praying is the best things that uh, best things that you can do. That's exactly what Job did. Um, it says that he immediately went on his knees and he humbled himself and he uh, he prayed to God.